got good things going for you. The electronic assembly business is booming here, right? The number one industry in Philippines, from what I've, I've read on the internet, and an idea, an ideal global product category. Being highly competent, highly specialized, highly focused, and building powerful brands. I mean, that's the opportunity in the 21st century that the internet is erasing many country borders. Many categories these days are global categories with, with companies from all sorts of countries dominating them. Typical examples are computers, smartphones, and automobiles, right? I mean, look at the, look at the individual market shares in these industries. There's companies and, and brands from all over the world. Here's computers, global smartphones, right? From Korea to many of them are in China. Four, in fact, of the top brands are from China. Global automobile shares, again, they're across the board and across the world. Now, there's an important principle as we move to this, obviously, global society and global brands, global categories, and it's what we call the, glo the, the law of globalism. And it's an important principle because it goes against you know, common sense, which many marketing principles do. And the goal, uh, the law of globalism says the larger the market, the smaller the product line. I mean, most people think, well, if I have a bigger market, I need more products. No, it's the opposite. The bigger the market, the more narrowly focused and specialized you need to be. I mean, think about it. If you lived in a small town of 150 people, I mean, what kind of stores would you find? You probably would find only one store that sold everything. So if you live in a, in a small country or a small town, you will find more companies that aren't specialized. But you have to change what you do as you go to the global big city and then eventually the big global market. And what you have to do is become more focused, more specialized. Like when you go to a bigger city, you'll find even highly, more highly specialized stores. And therefore, when you take your brand global, you gotta do the same thing. You might be brought more broad in the Philippines, sure. But when you go global, you gotta pick one thing, right? You should narrow your product line when you go global. Narrow it, narrow your product line, make it narrow so that you can build a brand. And that's the difference we face today. I mean, what is it that, that made America wealthy? Are we, are we smarter? No. <laughs> it's the global brands that American companies have built that have made America wealthy. Take the annual list that Interbrand puts out every year, right, of the 100 most valuable global brands. Guess how many are from America? 52. That's what is important in building the dominance of your country. It's building the opportunities for global brands. 52 are from America. Now we talked about China having a lot of exports and dominating America when it comes to exports, but how many brands do you think are from China? Right now there's only one. That's what China's missing. They're building business, but they haven't been as good as building brands. That's where I think there's an opportunity for Philippines, right? You can do it. You can not just build a business, but if you build the brands, you'll build and strengthen your country. Positioning principle number two, competitor, not customer. Again, a really important distinction. And another reason that many 20th century companies are in trouble today because they're customer oriented. I mean, most well, what do most companies think about? I gotta service my customer. I gotta make my customer happy. What does my customer want? You think like that is gonna take you down the, get you in trouble. The problem is not making your customers happy. That's not how you build a strong brand. The problem is your competitors. That's the challenge. And that should be the focus inside the company of, of, of thought of how, what you do when it comes to branding. Because the reality is if you had no competitors, you'd have 100% of the market. It's not 
being customer oriented, it's being competitor oriented. And that's where the, the, the principle of positioning comes down to, because what is marketing anyway? It's a battle between companies over markets. And where the analogy to warfare comes in, right? What's warfare? A battle between countries over territory. Warfare is a physical battle. Marketing is a mental battle, right? Positioning and marketing is about getting in the mind of the consumer so that they know you. They, you stand for something. They have a relationship with, with you. Marketing takes place inside the minds of the prospects. So what about the airline industry? They're extremely customer-oriented, as a matter of fact. They do everything they can to sort of please and offer a wide variety of things for their customers. I mean, some customers want first class. Some customers want coach class. Typical response, right? The four airlines in America offered both. You know, we got multiple classes. Now, now we have, even have a middle comfort class. And so how are those four leading American airlines doing on the market with serving a wide variety of services? Bankrupt, bankrupt, bankrupt. They didn't build a brand. I mean, compare that to the other airline that did the opposite. Compare that to the other airline that didn't go bankrupt because they did it differently. They didn't offer everything to everybody. Southwest did the opposite. Why not? Why didn't they go bankrupt? They focused and they were different. Coach class only. Not everything. Coach class only built their brand. And in 43 years of operation, Southwest has never had an unprofitable year. You don't necessarily have to sell everything. You've got to stand for one thing. And more most companies are focused on being better instead of being different. Different. It's difficult to win by being better. It's not that it's bad to be better. It's hard to win to be better. You don't win by being better. I mean, think about it. When you say that your brand is better, what does the consumer say? Or what do they think? That's what they all say. I don't believe that. They expect all brands to claim they're terrific, right? That's what everybody says. It's easier to win, not by saying you're better, but by saying you're different. And by having some unique difference, maybe even a visual difference that helped you do that. Because when you say your brand is different, the consumer then thinks, well, why does that make it better? And therefore, you start the conversation. You give them a reason to engage, and they're willing then to consider why, we should, why should we pay all that money for first class and why should we save money and go with Southwest? Or take the energy drink market, right? A category created by Red Bull. They had a unique and distinctive 8.3 ounce can. It was a very, very powerful part of, of, of the brand, as a matter of fact. But when you have success, and today it's a $6.2 billion global brand, you also have competitors. So how do you compete with Red Bull? Most try to compete by being better. We're all in the same can because we got to look like Red Bull, but we're all going to claim to be we're better. And hundreds of competitors came out in these cans. Were any of them successful? Not really. The only one that was is Monster. And Monster did it by being different. The first brand in a 16-ounce can. Is 16 ounces better? I don't know. Maybe for some, but not necessarily. It was different. That's what made it better. And today in the U.S., Monster is a strong number two brand. And now with investment from Coke, they're taking that brand around the world. And I think a strong competitor absolutely long term to Red Bull. How about Coca-Cola? I mean, they've tried for years to have their own energy drink. Where are they? Right down here. 1%. They were different. They try to be better. You don't win by being better. Positioning principle number three. Narrow, not broad. 
Everyone wants to get into more things, sell more stuff. That's not the way you build a brand. You gotta be narrow to build a brand in the mind. I mean, remember, you don't, you don't win in the market, you win in the mind. How do you get in the mind? That's the tricky part. How do you get people to pay attention to you? It's more challenging than ever to get people just to pay attention. And that's the reason for the narrow focus. It's to get their attention. And when you build a brand, you gotta sharpen that knife. And it's much easier to get in the mind with a sharp knife than a dull knife. And that's what narrowing the focus does for your brand.